Hey guys, Movie Fan 356 here, and um, as you can probably tell by the thumbnail and the title, um, this isn't going to be a Robin Williams movie review. I'm going to do those a couple at a time, randomly, because there are other videos that I want to get to, and um, so I will be doing those, I, I, I will be doing more Robin Williams reviews, but you'll kind of see uh, like two or three of them go up randomly. Um, but today we're talking about a very different movie that has nothing to do with Robin Williams. And uh, if you guys are new to the channel, I'm going to explain a little backstory here of what's going on. Last year, uh, it was September, last September, September of 2013, I reviewed Friday the 13th parts 1, 2, and 3. And I said that I was going to be reviewing all the Friday the 13th movies. And um, I, like I said, I only did the first three. I, uh, I just didn't have the time. Uh, that I thought I had to do all all uh, 11 or 12 Friday the 13th movies. But I'd like to bring that back. I'd like to pick up where I left off, which reminds me, um, I think I had my hat backwards on in those videos. So, all right. I feel like I'm back in 2013 again. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so, anyway, we are, I'm going to be reviewing... Friday the 13th, the final chapter. And, um, actually, before I get on with this review, a lot of people are asking, well, you know, what about Halloween Horror Month? You, I, I thought you were doing that. Why don't you just review them in October when you do the rest of them? Which, by by the way, I just put up a little trailer that I cut together. Um, it took me about three days to put together. It's not the best-looking trailer or anything like that. Uh... I am limited by the technology that I have, actually the programs that I have. Um, so I try to do the best I could, um, but check out my little trailer that I put together for Halloween Horror Month this year. I'm pretty excited of showing you clips of some of the stuff, I'm of pretty much everything that I'm going to be reviewing this October. Um, but yeah, the schedule's full for Hall uh, for Halloween Horror Month this year, so I'm going to get it done before that, and you know, Superhero September all month long in September reviewing superhero movies and right after that Halloween Horror Month so we're going to get Friday the 13th done uh, bef hopefully before the end of the month Friday the 13th the final chapter came out in 1984 it's directed by uh, Joseph Zito Joseph Zito and uh, basically the plot of this film is purely simple but it's a little bit different from uh, the first three Friday the 13th movies, because that was one of the complaints I had about the first three, is, you know, the plot lines are pretty much the exact same. This one's a little bit different. It picks up immediately after Friday the 13th Part 3 ends, with the aftermath of what happened in the last one. And, um, the paramedics and stuff are taking Jason Voorhees to the morgue, because he's dead. He There's there's no coming back from, from all that. Well, uh... When he gets to the morgue, he wakes up and he decides that he's not done. Jason is not even close to being done. He needs to go out and uh, now he's just really pissed off again. So, you know what happens to Jason Voorhees when he's pissed off. I wouldn't want to be in a dark alley with him. Actually, no, I wouldn't want to be. But Jason in, in a dark alley is something that I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh -huh. But uh, this film stars uh, Corey Feldman and Crispin Glover, yes. George McFly from Back to the Future. Hi, I'm George. George McFly. I'm your density. I mean, your destiny. Uh, last night, Darth Vader came from Planet Vulcan and said that if I didn't ask Lorraine to the dance, that he'd melt my brain. Oh, hey, guys. How are you doing? Uh, this is not a Back to the Future. You don't know why I'm quoting Back to the Future. It's fucking Crispin Glover, though. Corey Feldman before his Goonie days, you know, um, it was done in 1984, uh, which Go Goonies I don't think was done in, uh, until like 1986 or seven. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. It might be might have been 1985, um, but it, th this was before that. And uh, basically, like, 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 let's pick up the plot. The plot is, um, so it's not really about these teenagers going to Camp Crystal Lake to be camp counselors again. No. They, uh, they try to take a different take with it while still keeping it feeling like a Friday the 13th film, and I respected that. Um, it's these teenagers going on vacation to a vacation home near Crystal Lake, and right across 
Basically, right across the way is where Corey Feldman's character, Tommy Jarvis, and his mother and his sister and his dog live. And uh, Jason's heading that way. And uh, what I think of Friday... The, and he basically go, goes on a rampage, and that's the plot. What I think of Friday the 13th, the final chapter, is I like it, actually. It is one of the better sequels, because a lot of the sequels are shit. And I'll talk about them. And, uh, but, you know, this was one of the better ones. And, um, uh, I have to say, the death scenes, the, the, the kills in this one were pretty cool. Um... But that, that's the thing about these movies. You know, sometimes when the movies are really shit, they got good kills. That kind of makes up a little bit. But this one was just a good film. I mean, you got uh, acting. Let's talk about the acting. The acting is about as good as it you can expect from a Friday the 13th film. I think we all know how the acting goes in these films. Corey Feldman, though, steals the show. Like, J. J Jason Voorhees, of course, he, he's a badass in this film. But to me, Corey Feldman, Tommy Jarvis, steals the show in this film. And uh, Crispin Glover does a great job. I wish Crispin Glover would do more. Uh, the last thing I remember seeing him in was uh, Epic Movie. You know, that spoof where they were uh, um, kind of spoofing the Chronicles of Narnia and stuff like that. He played Willy Wonka in this film, which I actually kind of laughed at his scenes. You know, that's probably the best part of Epic Movie, in my opinion. Um, no! No, no, I take that back. The last thing I remember seeing Crispin Glover in was that shitty Tim Burton, that god-awful Alice in Wonderland film. That explains why he's not doing anything else anymore. That, anyways, back to the part of the 13th, the final chapter. Jason's a badass. The acting is about as good as you can possibly get from a Friday the 13th film. Corey Feldman shines and steals the show. Crispin Glover's good. Um, there's a couple... Uh, issues that I kind of have with this film is a couple of the characters are just unlikable. Um, you don't really give a shit about a few of these characters. Honestly, the only characters I really kind of gave a full shit about was Tommy Jarvis played by Corey Feldman, Crispin Glover's character, and uh, Tommy Jarvis's sister somewhat. Those are about the only three characters in this film that we I actually kind of gave a shit about. And, uh, but let's talk about the ending. If you, so, spoiler alert, actually, you know what? This movie came out in 1984. It's been, holy shit, it's been 30 years now since this film. Uh, 30 years. So if you haven't seen Friday the 13th, the final chapter by now, you must not give all that much of a shit about seeing it. Because it's been out for 30 years now, and I'm pretty sure you've had a chance to watch it. Um, so the ending of the film... Tom, uh, Jason Voorhees has finally met his match. Like, Tommy Jarvis is the person who pissed Jason Voorhees off the most in this franchise. And, uh, this is kind of where it all started. And, you know, the ending, he's, Jason Voorhees is down in the basement attacking Tommy Jarvis's sister. Tommy Jarvis shaves his head off like Jason. Um, and he kind of messes up his face a little bit. And he runs down to the basement and just starts, you know, trying to talk to Jason. Which was kind of a confusing scene. Some will uh, argue the fact that, you know, he was trying to, um, I guess, kind of give Jason some memories of, like, how he was as a child or something. I, I don't know. To get to Jason to kind of sympathize with Tommy Jarvis so they can distract him or something. I don't know exactly what was going on there. What was the whole purpose behind that fully? I don't understand 100%. Um, but if you guys have like a better interpretation, because that's pretty much what I got out of it. If you guys have a better interpretation, leave a comment down below and uh, let me know what what, uh, what what you guys think was going on there. Um, and then, you know, all of a sudden Tommy Jarvis starts killing Jason. Well, killing Jason Voorhees. He's like, Die! die um and you know that, that was i thought was a solid ending but it's kind of insinuating that tommy jarvis is gonna be the next jason vor he's like he's gonna take up the mantle um and i i i'm kind of wondering what the series would have been like if they went that way the, the rest of the sequels went went that way um Obviously, looking back now, I mean, Jason's iconic 
Jason's an iconic character, and uh, you know, I, I you can't really see these movies without the Voorhees name. Um, and I say that because, you know, obviously Jason was not the killer in the first movie. I already reviewed that one. Mrs. Voorhees, Pamela Voorhees, his mother, was, was the killer in, in the first one. So, really, the Voorhees name you can't do uh, without in this series. But, you know, Corey Feldman's a good actor, and I, I respect him a lot. And I respect the Paramount. I believe Paramount was, yeah, Paramount uh, did all these. Um, and I kind of respect them for kind of... Uh, taking a different storyline than the first three. It's not just camp counselors going to Camp Crystal Lake um, to uh, set up to be camp counselors for, for the summer. It's kind of a different approach while still keeping that, okay, yeah, this is a Friday the 13th film full out. Um, if you guys don't know, know what I'm saying there. But yeah, Friday the 13th final chapter, it's a solid movie. It's one of the better sequels of the, of the series. It's one I have fun with watching. Um... Like I said, I already talked about the acting. The kills are actually pretty cool for the most part. The characters, you kind of just don't give a shit about, except for that, that select few that I uh, talked about earlier for a minute. Jason Voorhees is a badass. Overall, I'm going to give this movie an A-. minus. But Like I said, I just wish we cared more about the characters. Um, I respect the fact that it kind of went in a different direction while keeping that Friday the 13th feel. Um... I'm glad we actually seen somebody give Jason a run for his money finally. Um, Corey Feldman's performance, like I, I, I can't say that enough. He stole the show. Um, so yeah, if you guys are Jason Voorhees fans, you haven't watched Friday the 13th, the final chapter yet, why? Why not check it out? Um, <laughs> I kind of sounded like that dude from Full House for a second there. Cut it out. <laughs> um, I'll never do that again. I promise you, I will never ever do that again. So Friday the Thirteenth, the final chapter, it's uh, it, it's solid. Go check it out. And guys, that's all I can say for today. I'll see you guys in the next video.